In other news, a new report by NGO Monitor reveals how later this week, a French association operating in Israel and the Palestinian territories will be launching its new youth program in East Jerusalem. But in line with Israeli assertions that so-called peace-seeking European organizations have ties to terror, the contact person listed for this program is Daoud Brul, a man convicted just in 2015 of being a member of the PFLP terrorist organization. And here now with more on this story is Sean Sachs, a senior researcher at the NGO Monitor, and Ziv Ma'o, chairman of Israel Media Watch. Thank you both very much for coming in. All right, so, uh, Sean, I'll actually begin with you. You know, tell me about this organization and, and this situation. What's going on? Well, um, it actually starts with this particular organization based in the East Jerusalem. Um, it's called Al-Bustan. And over the years, we've actually seen that um, it's an organization without very much media attention. Um, it does have a very active Facebook page. And even going back to 2014, the organization has been um, at least supporting a number of PFLP activities, encouraging PFLP activists, um, retweeting or even reposting PFLP propaganda. And this is the organization that was selected by a variety of French municipalities to carry out youth organization training. So, okay, so how did they get to Arbustan, though? Like, how, you know, how, did they not vet? Are they willfully ignorant? Do they, you know, well, how, how did this occur? That's the question that the French government needs to answer. Um, there's a significant amount of money that has gone to this organization from the French government, from the French foreign ministry, and from a variety of municipalities in uh, the French Republic. And they have been giving money to this Albustan organization, listing Dawid Gold as their contact person. And anybody who does a simple Google search will realize that this is somebody who is very much aligned with the PFLP. He's been convicted of PFLP activities. And one of the, uh, most surprisingly, one of the things in his conviction stated that he's been recruiting youth using PFLP propaganda. Yet none of this vetting was done by any of the French organizations that gave money to the Al-Bustan organization. So, Ziv, you know, I'll come to you now. What, what do you think this says about the state of foreign financing in Israel and, you know, and, and what can Israel really be doing about it? Should Israel be doing something about it? And, you know, well, what, what should that response look like? First of all, it says a very significant thing about the people who, who make those decisions. We've come to a point where the line between terrorism and human rights is vague, which is completely weird, you know? How can, how can one confuse between human rights and terrorism? But this is where we've come from, and this is where the broken moral compass of the world left and the criticism towards Israel have brought us to. Now, as to what the Israeli government can do, first of all, we must acknowledge that what is so-called East Jerusalem is, in fact, sovereign Israel. According to Israeli law, according to international law, Israel has full sovereignty over there, and Israeli law completely applies over there. If these people eventually engage in any kind of activity that is affiliated with terrorism, the Israeli law authorities has the right to act. Now, if this uh, uh, activity, it, it would appear to be sponsored by a foreign entity, then I expect the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, uh, the new uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs that we have to act, to call ambassador of foreign states, to call back home the ambassadors that we have at the relevant countries, and to have this, this discussion openly that we will not accept cooperation between foreign entities, alleged uh, countries that we are in peace with and, and with good re in good, good relationship with, to engage in terrorist-affiliated activity on our land. This would not be accepted. Is, is, doesn't Israel already have, you know, the anti-BDS law in place, which, you know, should ideally prevent this sort of situation from happening in the first place? Well, BDS is a very specific thing because BDS proposes a challenge uh, for a democratic liberal country because it has several uh, freedom of speech issues. This is not what we are talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. We're talking about the PFLP, which is at, at, at the bottom of things, is uh, conceived to be an organization that uh, enacts terrorist activities from time to time. This is way beyond, way crosses the line of, of, uh, 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 of uh, freedom of speech and of BDS. And we also obviously have laws against that. It's, it's only a question whether the Israeli government will decide to take, act, to take action. All right, so uh, back to you, Sean. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think uh, the, the, it's true that we're talking about something that goes well beyond BDS. But the other question needs to be that um, the French government and many other European governments are very adamant about promoting a negotiated peace, nonviolence, etc. But here, a program that is supposed to be targeting youth in East Jerusalem specifically is being maintained and run by 
somebody convicted of membership in the PFLP. In fact, even if we look at past operations of this same so-called youth organization, they have, uh, they have had mock executions, they have very violent training. So again, the question needs to be put, why does French policy not meet French funding standards? Or more importantly, why do the French speak about peace and cooperation, yet their financing still goes to organizations that are blatantly still encouraging violence against Israelis and Jews? So that actually kind of brings me to my next question. You know, is there any possibility, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, is there any possibility that, you know, the, that the French organizations, and maybe we can get into what those organizations are, who are involved with Al-Bustan and with this, uh, with this youth program, that maybe they have a little bit more control over, over what is being taught there at all? Is there, is there any way that maybe the, the agenda of the group organization, of the collective, is acceptable? Well, again, that is something that the French need to, need to acknowledge. If you're giving money to an organization that claims to be carrying out youth activities, and those activities include mock, mock execution, sure. promoting the goals of the PFLP, completely disregarding the, idea, the notion that there is a Jewish state. If that's the organization you're willing to charge with youth activities, it means the state of your moral compass or the state of your funding apparatus is severely hampered. And a state that is able to make these kind of funding decisions completely obliviously, then their ability to, uh, to be actively involved in a peace process or a negotiated solution also needs to be called into question. Well, and, and how much money are we talking about here? How much money has come from France or European governments into, into Arbustan and to this organization? Uh, just to this organization, we're talking about over 150,000 euro over the, per year over the last three years. Oh, wow. And that is, most of it is actually municipal money, not even government money, but the money comes from a variety of municipalities in the French Republic, then it is approved by the French foreign ministry and then to Abu Stan. I must ask, forgive me for making a question, how many children are involved in this activity? So again, that is another problem that um, the organization itself doesn't, necessarily, doesn't have a very major web presence. Most of the information we get is from the French municipalities themselves who are very open about the fact that they're giving money to this Abu Stan organization. And then again, a very simple reading of Al-Bustan, you can find their mm. social media pages where they're very active. They're very open about their support for the PFLP. And like I said before, some of their activities that speak about very violent activities, mm. very violent actions. All right. Well, unfortunately, it's time we have Sean Sachs, uh, Zeev Mal, thank you so thank much, much. For, for coming in. Thank you very much.